Okay, yeah, it's bypass. So, yeah, well, maybe it's then a good time to, for us to get going. So, actually, yeah. we're very happy to have Mao Zeng from currently from the University of Oxford. It's going to tell us about integrals for post Minkowski and classical dynamics. Thanks, Mao. Okay. Thanks to organizers, uh, Gabriele, um, Dono, and other organizers for the kind invitation. I'll talk about uh, loop integrals for post Minkowski and classical dynamics. Due to the limited time, it will be a personal selection of topics um, rather than a general overview, so hopefully uh, to generate some discussion. So uh, the, we know um, just uh, recent years, we've seen this rather new amplitude approach to two-body dynamics in general relativity. So using a variety of methods like Icono exponentiation, non-relativistic EFT, the k mock formalism, which um, uh, defines classical limits of quantum observables, and analytic continuation uh, by Gregor and Raphael, which gets uh, bound state dynamics from hyperbolic uh, scattering. Now, um, so uh, tr uh, the most uh, well established uh, expansion is the post Newtonian expansion around the small velocity limit. Uh, in this case, the integration methods are uh, relatively mature. Uh, 4PN was done in 2014. So generally you get uh, rational numbers, pi or zeta values. And there's been a rapid progress at even higher orders as we heard yesterday from Donato and uh, Andres. The post minkowski expansion uh, was uh, decades old, but it has uh, renewed attention in recent years. Um, the, uh, it keeps exact velocity dependence at each order and uh, at the cost of making the int integrals, the functions more complicated, you are going to run into polylogarithms, elliptic integrals, etc. cetera. And um, antip anticipating um, the importance of going to even higher orders in the post minkowskian expansion, uh, like the complete 4 p.m. and uh, maybe even beyond, integration is going to be a key bottleneck. So this uh, talk uh, logically follows uh, Radu's talk yesterday about the integrand uh, side of the calculation. So we will also hear talks of, uh, from Carlo and uh, Ludovic uh, about uh, different methods for doing the integration. So just to give a little bit of more background, as uh, uh, most of you already know. Um, so uh, recently we've had uh, uh, exciting uh, progress in post minkowski and expansion after uh, 35 years uh, uh, after Westphal's uh, calculation at the second post minkowski order. Um, so, um, so the 4 p.m., uh, 3 p.m. is uh, done, uh, essentially completely done, um, in, including both conservative and radiative effects, uh, including radiation reaction and energy loss. 4 p.m. so far has been done uh, in only the potential region. So that's uh, part of the uh, local uh, potential and uh, which has some uh, divergences and that have to be canceled by a more complete uh, calculation. So um, uh, the, there's a very neat connection between post-Newtonian and post minkowskian integration methods. And that's uh, the use of differential equations, which was uh, uh, well established in the uh, loop integra integration literature, especially related to uh, uh, colliders but uh, it was recently uh, introduced to uh, post minkowskian uh, gravity calculations. Here you use uh, uh, techniques uh, as you encountered in post Newtonian expansion to get a Taylor series in velocity. And then um, this uh, near static behavior is used as uh, differential equations, uh, is used as boundary conditions for differential equations with respect to velocity. This uh, promotes uh, uh, the boundary condition to full functions uh, with exact de dependence. So one of the uh, uh, 
good things about the post minkowski scan expansion is that you have access to the ultra relativistic limit. For example, last year we've seen that um, in the ultra relativistic limits, you need a cons uh, conspiracy um, uh, be between uh, conservative and, re and radiation reaction contributions to cancel the divergence. So uh, this kind of new analytic features um, uh, is uh, they are completely in inaccessible in a purely post Newtonian calculation. And uh, it's uh, tempting to speculate that one may also try to go in the reverse direction. So if one works out a, a good method to uh, do analytic calculations in the ultra relativistic limit, then in principle, you can also use your differential equations to go in the opposite direction to get the uh, post minkowskian ex expansion with exact velocity dependence. So uh, I'll briefly uh, talk about, uh, I'll just enumerate the kind of tools we use, mostly imported from the loop integration literature, well known from glider studies. There is the expansion by regions uh, by Benneke and Smirnov. Um, we do uh, this expansion because uh, we are ultimately uh, not interested in complete Feynman integrals. We are interested in the limits and the classical limit. For example, uh, in, in the 222 scattering of massive scalars uh, representing uh, binary black hole dynamics, the exchange momentum will be of the order h bar over r. R is the radial separation or impact parameter for the scattering case. This is going to be a tiny uh, exchange momentum compared with the masses of the black holes. Um, so, and physically speaking, we need iterated exchange of a huge number of these uh, very soft gravitons to build up a finite scattering angle in the macroscopic classical sense. For example, in Eichel uh, approximation with an exponentiation, or when you solve equation of motion in non relativistic effective field theories. And, and this will, is also an implicit exponentiation uh, procedure. Now, the other techniques include integration by parts reduction, which Radu also touched upon uh, yesterday. So um, generally, uh, your Feynman rules or your integrand construction using generalized unitarity, it gives you lots of numerators. And in the case of gravity, the numerators will have very high degrees in general. After uh, uh, integration by parts reduction, uh, you get simple integrals. Uh, in the one loop case, for example, you just get scalar integrals, box, triangle, bubbles, where you just calculate these integrals. Uh, the only non-trivial special functions will be inside these uh, simple master integrals. And then other than that, you just have rational functions in your Mandelstam Mandel variables and masses as coefficients of these uh, master integrals. Then there's the technique of differential equations, uh, which let, uh, allow you to transport information between different points in the kinematic space of uh, Feynman integrals. It's ultimately based on integration by parts reduction. And very recently, we introduced a reverse unitarity um, into gravitational physics. So the most well-known uh, applications of reverse unitarity uh, was in the calculation of the Higgs total cross-section at hadron colliders. Uh, it was used to uh, obtain the NNLO result and more recently the state-of-the-art and cube their old results for Higgs cross-section. And uh, it turns out to be just as powerful for gravitational uh, wave physics. Um, so uh, uh, you, you probably heard that for the integrand construction, we like to use unitarity to promote uh, uh, tree amplitude to loop amplitudes. But when we go to phase space integration of products of trees, it's often um, uh, convenient to, to go in the reverse direction, um, uh, reusing some loop integration techniques for phase space integrals. Uh, so I believe uh, Enrico and uh, Michael will cover in more details in the coming days. So now I'll come to the first topic, the expansion by regions. The purpose is to uh, get an expansion of Feynman integrals. Typically, these are non-convergent asymptotic expansions. 
Now, um, so uh, in the particular uh, case uh, uh, we are studying, it's the uh, massive scalar scattering. The exchange momentum Q is much smaller than the incoming momentum for the black holes P. So um, it's uh, in, you know, clearly you need an expansion in the small parameter Q over P, but it's more difficult um, a priori to know how do you treat L because L is integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity. It's over the complete uh, uh, loop uh, momentum space. So L could take values comparable with P or Q or anywhere in between. Now, um, so uh, very fortunately, these issues uh, were studied a long time ago, uh, certainly much uh, earlier before Bendik and Smirnov, but they uh, systematized, uh, systematized lots of things in 1998. In, uh, in this method of regions, um, the full integral as a series in a small q to any order is a sum over um, uh, contributions from different regions. In this particular case, there are uh, two regions, the soft region where L is comparable with the T-channel momentum transfer Q and uh, both much smaller than P. So we do a Taylor expansion in small Q over P and L over P. And after the Taylor expansion, we do not restrict the integration region to just a small L, but we integrate over all uh, L from minus infinity to plus infinity. And in, the, in this expansion, typically the matter propagators will be linearized um, uh, into something like this. Uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's also called an icono propagator. Now there's also the hard region. If you want to do a uh, uh, comparison with full integrals, uh, you need to add, add up both regions. Um, so here you only consider the Q exchange momentum to be small uh, compared with P. But the loop, uh, the loop momentum Q, uh, sorry, the loop momentum L, you consider it to be uh, comparable with P. And uh, then uh, both Q over P and Q over L are considered to be small. If you do the Taylor expansion in this way, and again, integrate over all values of L, um, you will obtain contributions in the hard region. But uh, for, for our uh, case, the hard region is not very interesting because it's literally a naive Taylor series in Q squared. After you Fourier transform to a position space, you get contact interactions, which are ir irrelevant for long range physics. Um, so not just classical physics, also quantum physics at non-zero impact parameter. So um, there are lots of int uh, intricate issues in proving the method of regions rigorously. For example, the regions can overlap. Uh, in this simple example, it doesn't matter, but there are eventually it matters for things like the tail uh, contributions. Uh, in, in the most simplest uh, cases, uh, up to two loops, uh, the, van the, the overlap contributions vanish as scaleless integrals for non-trivial reasons, and they can be dropped. And uh, there, are also, there are also other issues. For example, uh, this expansion, L plus P1 squared minus M1 squared. Um, so you, uh, uh, P1 squared cancels M1 squared and you get two terms, but you, um, you, ex you ignore L squared in the soft region because L squared is quadratic in the soft region, whereas the first term is linear. So you think the first term dominates. This is, this is indeed the correct thing to do, but the justification is actually non-trivial because you are in Minkowskian kinematics and there are subregions of soft kinematics where L squared becomes as small as P1.L. So to prove that these regions don't matter requires um, uh, lots of studies. For example, in this paper by Akuri Sautom uh, Sturman, they argued uh, using uh, contour deformations uh, to argue that uh, these um, weird regions can always be deformed out of. Okay, so to set up the uh, stage for our actual calculations, I'll introduce uh, more techniques. 
So here it's something rather trivial, but it's convenient. It's using a symmetric parameterization uh, for uh, the uh, external momenta. Here I write M1, uh, sorry, P1 is um, M1 times U1 minus Q over two. And what, what comes out is M1 U1 plus Q over two uh, after you absorb a uh, transfer momentum of Q. So here I've divided uh, this, uh, um, by M1, so U1 is a normalized ball vector. Similarly for P2, P3, uh, which, is, which represents the other mass, massive scalar or the other uh, black hole, it's written as M2, U2 plus Q over two initially. After you lose momentum Q, you are left with M2 times U2 minus Q over two. So this U1 and U2 variables are normalized uh, to have unit norm. And they are uh, transfers to the momentum of Q. For example, U1 and U2 are generally, uh, you can choose a frame in which uh, they are in the time and longitudinal Z directions, while Q are in the transfers X or Y directions. And now the uh, U1 dot U2 uh, equals Y, uh, where I defined. And uh, this is the only uh, variable uh, on which our functions will depend on non trivially. So uh, our integrals can be, for example, uh, polylogarithms or elliptic integrals uh, in this y variable. So, and the advantage of the expansion is that m1 and m2 uh, variables are essentially factored out. So it nicely connects to with the uh, uh, self force expansion, for example. Um, the result, as Radu mentioned, is uh, naturally in terms of uh, mass ratios. You can separate uh, these um, uh, powers of M1 and M2 from the total result. And for technical reasons uh, related to loop integration, for example, the techniques of integration by parts reduction and differential equations. So this expansion is also enormously helpful uh, because it reduces uh, three non-trivial variables to just one variable, and it dramatically simplifies the formulas, and it dramatically speeds up the computer algebra calculations. Okay, so now I'll talk about um, the simplex cases, how we calculate integrals at one loop. So, um, so this box uh, integral, uh, we have um, a total exchange momentum equal to Q. One of the graviton momentum I write as L, the other one is Q minus L. The external momentum, which I have uh, parameterized uh, symmetrically is P1 equals M1 U1 minus Q over two, and P2 equals M2 U2 plus Q over two. Now you have this uh, uh, loop momentum uh, on the matter lines, P1 plus L and P2 minus L. So uh, the four propagators for the box are written out here. The graviton propagators, uh, they are left alone in the soft expansion, but the matter propagators are expanded. As I mentioned, the top matter propagator written uh, fully here. Um, when, we, when you cancel P1 squared with M1 squared, you are left with these two terms. And um, so to P1 dot L is, uh, um, the leading term is just m1 u1 dot l, and then plus some other small contributions, uh, which I, uh, now I do a Taylor expansion. At the leading order, I only consider linearized propagator u1 dot l. At further orders in the Taylor expansion, I still have these linear propagators, but raised to higher powers, for example, uh, squared power at the next leading order in the expansion. Okay. So I, I have uh, linearized all the matter propagators. I, I would denote linearized propagators by double lines. And um, so this is one of the master integral I mentioned above. And in the uh, uh, expansion, I will also get other integrals. As I mentioned, you can get higher powers on the linear propagator, which I denote by a dot. So, and you also get all sorts of numerators. But fortunately, by integration by part reduction, everything is reduced to a few master integrals, including the scalar box and triangle and bubble, it, et cetera. So these are all the master integrals I have to calculate. 
So um, the soft expansion is done, but uh, to get to an actual answer in terms of functions, I still need to do some work. Um, the first strategy I'll present is the velocity expansion. So here it's done, it's a further series expansion after you do the small um, Q expansion. And so um, uh, originally we did it in the opposite order. So in the 2019 paper, which first uh, published the 3 p.m. conservative potential, we uh, first uh, uh, integrated in the potential region to pick up contributions from um, uh, matter, uh, positive energy matter poles. Then we soft expanded the remaining integrals. Um, but um, and uh, uh, when we try to systemize, uh, system, systematize the methods, we find it convenient to reverse the order of the expansion, uh, partly because um, the results, uh, the, the, because the procedure can be reused for uh, a calculation in the soft region without truncation to the potential region. So uh, soft region is a shared procedure. So soft expansion is a, is a shared procedure, uh, which we always do as a first step. And after that, you can choose to do the further series expansion in small velocity in the potential region, or you can choose to uh, uh, not expand any further. So again, uh, we are uh, doing this exercise of uh, the expansion by region again we need to sum over multiple regions to get the complete results. And at one and two loops, the conservative dynamics uh, comes purely from the potential region, which is uh, uh, very convenient for our calculation. So as we recall, we first, uh, the first expansion is in small q, it's the soft expansion. So the hot region is where uh, uh, q is big, and the soft region is where Q is small compared with H bar over R. And now we have a second expansion in small V. Now the uh, regions are a little more, com a little, uh, more complicated. There's the potential region where um, the uh, gravitons are dominated by uh, spatial uh, components of loop momentum. So the spatial components are, are generic they are of order h bar over r, um, which was set by the previous expansion, uh, the, the soft expansion. But the uh, energy component of the graviton, the Q0 component, now is um, uh, restricted to be small, suppressed by another factor V. That's the potential region. So intuitively, that's the dynamics, uh, because uh, that's because conservative dynamics comes from uh, exchanging uh, uh, spatial momentum between these two massive bodies with hardly any energy exchange. The radiation region is where uh, all components of graviton momentum are comparable, is compar and, and they are equal to um, the generic soft momentum Q times uh, uh, order V suppression. And that's because the orbital period becomes large when V is small, and so the um, Gravita gravitational wavelength becomes large and uh, uh, wave back, uh, the wave number becomes small. So the radiation region is, uh, sits in this corner. Then there's the quantum soft region where all components of your graviton momentum are generic. Um, as, uh, so generic means um, uh, what was set by the initial soft expansion. So uh, I think in the world line picture, it's uh, more clear that the quantum soft region should drop out and you should only have potential regions and radiation regions basically. But in the amplitude approach, uh, you need some non-trivial work to, to cancel the quantum soft region. For example, by combining planar and non-planar diagrams. I should mention that um, the potential region is important for another reason. It's not just important for conservative dynamics, but it also gives the leading one over v to the l behavior for l loop uh, integrals uh, in the full soft region. So even when you do, uh, when, even when you include radiation uh, effects, um, it's uh, very useful in uh, fixing boundary conditions of the integrals, which can uh, be fed into differential equations. Okay. May I ask a question? Um, sure. Um, 
I, I, I don't quite understand what is the meaning of this uh, potential region separation if you are a generic V. Say, what mm. is the meaning of splitting the region if V is one half? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good question. I, I'm slightly abusing the terminology of potential region because if you read literature, if you read any literature before the recent post minkowski and studies, potential region uh, is used to uh, mean a fixed order expansion in velocity. Right. Um, but so here uh, the logic is, is like this. So the full integral, oh, let me go back a few slides. Um, so the full integral as a, um, as a series into any orders, is a sum over several regions. Mm -hmm. So, and then you can uh, consider each region resumed to all others. So mm -hmm. the statement becomes that the full integral, not as, not as a series, but as some exact function, is a sum over several regions, which are uh, individually exact functions. So here, when I talk about potential region, I'm abusing the terminology to mean the resumed potential region. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever velocity expansion you get from the potential region, but promote it to an exact, exact function. OK, thank okay. you. OK. And uh, are there any more questions from the audience? OK, if not, uh, let me go on. So. Um, yeah, so uh, back to our box example. So uh, the significance of the potential region can also be understood that uh, if you look at the linearized matter propagators, uh, U1.L, we know the external momentum, the normalized external momentum U1 is dominated by energy components with a small spatial component. So for U1.L to be, to have some, uh, to have homogeneous power counting, you need uh, L0 to be small uh, compared with the uh, spatial uh, part of L. Then L dot U1 uh, and, uh, is a homogeneous quantity. So, and intuitively speaking, the potential region is uh, the region where the matter propagators can potentially go on a shell. And that's uh, uh, easy. Uh, it's not hard to convince you that's where conservative dynamics should come from. So uh, when we expand in the potential region, generally, generally uh, the graviton momenta, uh, the graviton propagators will become three-dimensional because this L squared uh, written as L zero squared minus a spatial L squared will be dominated by the spatial parts and the L zero contribution simply appear on numerators in uh, further terms in the Taylor expansion. And uh, so, for example, if we specialize to a frame where, uh, where the... uh, what... sorry, there's a question. No. <laughs> or maybe there was just some noise. So or... yeah, yeah, just some. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, after the expansion, uh, L zero dependence uh, drop out from the graviton propagators. And you only get uh, uh, energy component L0 dependence on the two matter propagators uh, shown here. So they can be easily done uh, using contour integration. And in fact, you have poles on opposing side of the real axis. In this case, it doesn't matter uh, uh, if you close the contour above or below, you get some result for the L0 integral. Then after that, you just have a spatial part of the integral. And the spatial part of the integral will be very similar to what you encounter in uh, NRGR, so which people uh, knew how to compute uh, long ago. But how about the triangle integral? It's a little bit more complicated because we need to describe some uh, prescriptions for doing it. So if I uh, uh, specialize to a frame where my U1 is uh, in the purely energy direction, now, compared with the box integral, I'm missing uh, a second matter propagator. I just have the two uh, graviton propagators, which have been expanded into three-dimensional propagators. Then you have this two U1.L. If U1 is uh, just in the energy direction, this is essentially L0. 
and then uh, with some I epsilon prescription. So formally speaking, the potential region uh, doesn't make that much sense because there's no velocity dependence in this integral, even though we are uh, defining the potential region uh, by referring to some velocity power counting. So, and in fact, this contour integral in L, L0 becomes weird. It only has uh, one pole. And, and uh, if you close it uh, above, you get zero. If you close below, you get minus i pi. And of course, there's an ambiguity because there's the pole at infinity. So um, the, the prescription we use is the symmetrization prescription. We average over um, two uh, relabeling of the same integral. So we do a transformation L0 goes to minus L0. And this energy uh, denominator becomes an uh, average of two versions. And so I can average over them uh, because of course the, it has a unit Jacobian in my transformation. Now um, in this expression, I have to control it on both sides. So it doesn't matter uh, if I close above or below. In any case, you can recognize this also as a delta function, which will make the integ integration well behaved. And you are left with uh, a, lo a localized, you localize L0 to zero and you are left with a 3D bubble integral. So uh, to be pedantic, um, if we follow our earlier reference of Bendikin and Smirnov, this is, this is not how they would do things. In their prescription, any, uh, any such integral like this will be considered as a dimensionless integral. They will be uh, set to zero as you always uh, do in dimensional regularization. And in their prescription, the triangle integral will be rather counterintuitively uh, contained inside the quantum soft region. Uh, so we have a slightly different prescription. Um, the advantage is that um, our definition of the conservative uh, of the potential region uh, uh, gives you exactly the conservative dynamics, at least at one and two loops. Of course, when you go to three loops, uh, it's a bit different. You also have some uh, conservative contributions from radiation. Okay, now uh, at one loop, uh, symmetrizing over L0 and minus L0 is simply symmetrizing over L10 and L L20 here because I have defined the momentum transfer Q to be have zero energy components. Q0 is zero. At two loops, um, I just label uh, three graviton momenta as uh, L1, L2, and L3. Uh, I leave the spatial integration alone for the second step. And, but when I do the energy control integrals, I will symmetrize over three factorial uh, permutations of these three uh, uh, energy components. So, uh, and you will get, uh, again, you will get uh, well-defined counter integrals, uh, which does not depend on your counter choice. In fact, uh, the, so here L1 and L2 are the independent loop variables. There are four different counter choices. You can close L1 above or below. You can close L2 counter above or below. But all the four counter cho choices will give you the same final result after the symmetrization. At three loops, uh, it turns out to be not so trivial, um, which is uh, actually a good thing. So for, uh, for simple topologies like this iterated triangle, again, the uh, four factorial permutations of these energy components give you some very well-defined contour integral, uh, 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 so which is independent of two uh, raised to third power, in, uh, independent that of eight different contour, cho contour choices. But there are other topologies uh, where you find that and if, uh, even when you symmetrize over these uh, energy routings, uh, you still have ambiguities. So the ambiguities only go away when you add up planar and non-planar integrals. So, um, and this is an issue many people have in the audience have studied because uh, there's some uh, conspiracy between planar and non-planar integrals are needed to uh, uh, give rise to classical dynamics. 
So, uh, but uh, if we assume this is going to happen, we can still assign uh, some uh, arbitrary symmetry factors to individual diagrams, uh, which is convenient uh, in the calculation because I define uh, individual diagrams uh, un unambiguously in the potential region contribution. Okay, so I've talked about how to do the expansion, but um, to, um, to uh, go to higher orders in, in the expansion, the computation can get very hard. The um, very useful technique is differential equations. So um, the first version was actually uh, already presented in the 2019 paper on the 3 p.m. conservative dynamics. Although uh, most of the results, certainly the main result of the paper was done using the velocity expansion. Although we did explore uh, 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 sort of as an afterthought, how a subset of integrals can be done conveniently uh, using differential equations. So just to give a, give a little bit of history, in that paper, we considered the integrals as functions of S, T, M1, and M2 as a, a full, function of, full functions of four variables. We took the velocity uh, uh, derivative, then you get some right-hand side of the differential equations so it's, uh, you get rather complicated differential uh, equations because we, ha we have many variables in the game. Um, and then eventually we looked at the differential equations and took the limit t goes to zero to get a classical behavior. Uh, it was a, ra a rather daunting exercise. I would not want to repeat again at higher loops. Fortunately, uh, we um, uh, formulated a simpler version um, in the paper uh, with um, Julio Pera Martinez and Michel Roof. So we do the soft expansion first, which effectively eliminates M1 and M2. And I essentially get integrals uh, depending non-trivially on just one parameter velocity. And um, so uh, generally, I, if I write my master integral as a column vector, the velocity in, uh, differential uh, derivative of the master integrals can be reduced by an IBP reduction uh, into some uh, sophisticated linear combination of the original set of master integrals uh, captured by this M matrix. So, and uh, one, fun, one fun game you can play is to uh, uh, play with different choices of master uh, integrals, even using automated software to make this matrix uh, nice. For example, Johannes Henn uh, devised a very uh, useful uh, scheme called the canonical differential equation, where you choose the set of masters to ensure that this uh, M matrix only has logarithmic singularities. Then all your master integrals will also only have logarithmic singularities. In fact, they will be called uniformly transcendental integrals, which are naturally connected with integrals you find, for example, in the amplitudes for n equals four super young Mills theory. I won't go into that uh, anymore. I will stick with the good old uh, velocity variables for simplicity in this rather short talk. So um, uh, uh, there's a, a simple example of differential e equation at one loop is that the, the box integral where I've normalized by a factor of, of velocity the velocity derivative is given by uh, just the uh, bubble integral times some uh, uh, simple function. So if you are working in the potential region, the right-hand side is actually zero because the bubble integral doesn't have any matter poles and, by, and the potential region is defined on matter poles. So um, the differential equation just tells you that the box integral is a constant. And so, and that's the result in the potential region. And in the soft region, it's still extremely simple because the bubble integral has no velocity dependence. So um, what, uh, the only velocity dependence of the box integral comes from here, and that's the result for the box integral. Okay, I'll, I'll skip through some of the contents. And so um, the, the setup extends to the two loop, two loop case. For example, the H integral was known exactly in 2016. We reproduce uh, with the soft differential equations. And uh, so 
all the master integrals are contained in uh, these uh, topologies and they are contact uh, subtopologies. So uh, we, we, calculated, we calculated all two loop integrals in the potential region in this paper. And then uh, also in the soft region, and uh, uh, also um, um, with, there's an independent calculation by uh, the back here, Heitenberg, Russo, and Veneziano, uh, almost uh, uh, published uh, in the same week as our paper. And so uh, we use lots of tricks to get boundary conditions for the uh, um, two loop integrals in the soft region. Uh, for example, uh, using one loop, there, there are integrals which are just one loop squared. There are iterated one loop integrals and there are some more difficult integrals uh, where, which can be reduced to uh, integrals in uh, lower space time dimensions. Okay, so, um, as I mentioned before, uh, the potential region is still useful when you consider radiative effects. For example, in our calculation of the double box integral in the full soft region, including both conservative and radiation effects, the leading uh, small v behavior comes from purely the potential region. And, and this is used as boundary conditions for our differential equations and um, so to enable us to get the full result. Okay. And then the, um, the similar methods can be applied to phase-based integrals, uh, for example, needed in the K-mod formalism for calculating uh, radiative observables like radiation reaction and energy loss. So uh, Enrico Herman and Michelle Roof will cover in more details. Uh, so, here, there's some nice ap application of unitarity. Um, so uh, generally, uh, in, uh, so you've heard a lot about generalized unitarity, but in this study, we have uh, some neat applications of good old um, uh, just unitarity in the sense of optical theorem. And um, so, uh, for example, imaginary part of base space integrals uh, um, sorry, imaginary part of a loop integrals can directly give you um, the, um, uh, the phase space integrals. And in some cases, you will need to uh, use, uh, you will have relations between multiple uh, cuts, again, uh, following from Kutkowski rules or uh, later treatments like Beltman's large, largest time equations. Okay, so, so, okay, I'm, uh, Enrico and Michelle will go to uh, um, more details, but that's what we, what enabled us to get the radiated uh, en energy, energy with exact velocity, velocity dependence or at the third post Minkowski and order. So that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention again. Thanks, Bob. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, are there any questions? Folk can maybe raise their hands if people have questions. Andreas. Hi. Hey. Um, yeah, so um, I was wondering um, about this ambiguity you mentioned in this uh, soft region. I mean, it happens in asymptotic expansion that you get integrals which are formally not well defined and you have to introduce another regulator, for instance, analytic regularization. Hmm. Is this, is this what, what's happening here or is it something else? Hmm. Okay, um, let me go to this. Okay, so yes, yeah, so for, for, so for example, uh, the, the box integral, it, it's naturally can be expanded in the potential region because potential region is uh, described this kind of forward scattering where an in intermediate states of two matter propagators go on shell simultaneously. But the soft, uh, but the tri triangle integral, um, the, the potential region, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's less well-defined. And so uh, analytic regulator can be one possible choice. Um, so, um, yeah, so to the, gen so the general motivation is that uh, usually you, you have just a dimensional regularization. So dimensional regularization can be thought of as a smooth version of, the, of a cutoff in terms of virtuality. 
but my potential region and soft region, um, um, so the soft region have virtuality Q squared. In my potential region, the uh, zeroth component becomes small, but the spatial components remain unchanged. So the virtuality is the same as in the soft region. So dimensional regularization, uh, when you thought, think of it as a cutoff in virtuality, doesn't separate these two regions. So you need some prescription to uh, separate them. So our uh, so um, in the literature, analytic regularization is a popular approach, and so what we do is can be thought of as something similar. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, Raphael is next. Hi, Mao. Hi. Uh, you haven't said anything about the three loops, and um, I guess Gregor will cover also how we actually land in the integral in a very different way. Mm. And many of the issues that you mentioned, we don't face. We have other issues, of course. Uh, but one thing I would like to ask you is like, um, how do you find these elliptics and how do you deal with them? Because if I understood correctly, you guys did not solve the full differential equation, right? For the three loop. Okay. Um, so um, there's a, uh, so the, the differential equations, uh, so, uh, so for, for, for some integrals, uh, we can get polylogarithm. Uh, so because the, at three loops, you have lots of integrals. Some are harder and some are uh, less hard. So for some of them, we can get polylogs. And so um, for some of them, we are not able to get simple expressions because we fail to find hence canonical form. In fact, it's impossible to find because eventually they are elliptic integrals. But um, what, uh, what we do, uh, not to uh, okay, just to keep it simple. So there are. Well, you can you can be not simple because we have it in pre-canonical, and uh, we have the elliptics in the differential equation, mm. and we managed to solve them, and we are very curious about how you guys found mm. the elliptics because for us they yeah. come from actually solving the epsilon zero term. So okay. for you, I don't know how you did it. So we are very curious to know how yeah. you got the elliptics. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned that you solve for epsilon zero term. I can say that we have something very similar. So we look at essentially we look at look at the simplest uh, integral which cannot be expressed as polylogarithm log logarithms which have no canonical form. We look at the simple simplest integral uh, with uh, like a, a minimal number of propagators. We solved it uh, at order epsilon zero in terms of elliptic integrals. This gives us some hints about what kind of elliptic integrals we can get in the full answer. So for the full result, it's rather hard. We solve that, solve this as a series, but we are able to uh, fit the series using simple elliptic integrals, which we saw in some of the simplest uh, integrals. Um, how do you do that? Just as a curiosity, do you do you do it with Mathematica? How do you know that that, that series was so you had an answer and then you fix coefficients? Uh, if you look at our the result in our paper, it's it's an extremely simple result. There are only uh, complete elliptic, elliptic integrals, the e integrals, the k integrals. No, there I are agree. no, no. I mean, in the literature, people have more complicated things. Like, I know, I know. In yeah. fact, I can tell you that we have an iterated elliptic that we can rewrite in terms of the elliptic. Yeah. But in principle, the differential equation itself gives you iterated elliptics as well. Yeah, that's right. So we have iterated el elliptics for indivi individual masters, and so due to our lack of effort, we didn't study all of them. We just fit the total result using uh, this, sim this simple uh, complete elliptic intervals uh, without any uh, it, uh, like elliptic polylogs. So yeah, basically we start with an ansatz with this E and K functions, uh, like an ansatz about like 60 uh, to 100 parameters. And we fit the ansatz uh -huh. using the, uh, yeah, uh, a series. We have a series to 400 orders. No, I know this. I know yeah. this. Yes. Yeah. We we are not. We're trying not to do that. At least. My other question, if, if you allow me, why you yeah. didn't do the soft region? You seem to have a lot of control of the full soft region. Why didn't mm. you just solve the soft region as well? Um. So the soft region will clearly be uh, 
Um, so the soft region will clearly be harder. Uh, so one technical reason is that you are going to get more master intervals. The IBP system will be will get larger. So every, everything will become more time consuming. And based on, on our experience, uh, the integrals will also uh, become, uh, you also encounter more, uh, more non-trivial integrals. For example, at two loops, the, in the potential region, the most uh, complicated thing you get is the arc shine. But if you go to the soft region, you already get arc shine squared in, for the individual H intervals. So, yeah, yes. but so yeah, everything will become more time consuming. But for the conservative yeah. part, I think we don't get any new. So if you just look at the conservative part, it looks like we will have almost all the integrals there because mm. the differential equation for the conservative basically captures all the, the mushrooms by themselves. So mm. it looks like there aren't that many new integrals. So I was wondering mm. if you try to do the conservative part of the soft, not the full soft, that, that's very complicated. But the conservative mm. part of the soft seems to be like very close to what you guys already have. And I was wondering why you didn't try, but we can, we can discuss that later. Oh, okay, yeah, we can talk later. But, but I mean, clearly we, there's something extra we have to do, we just didn't do, because the, so far we've done the potential region, but even the conservative tail, we have to go beyond that. So we have to like re set up the expansion in different regions again, et cetera. But in principle, it can be done. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, maybe I can ask a question, Mo, if that's okay. Um, can you go up to your diagram where you've got your different regions? You've got the... Okay, sure. Um... Okay, I think it's here. Uh, hmm, so it seems to have moved on my yeah. screen somehow. Um, um, so can, can, can you see it now? Um, no, no. Somehow, yeah. Okay, if my got, screen maybe, breathes. Um, maybe it's got, yeah, like, is it your pointer still moving? That's weird. Oh, maybe it isn't. Yeah, your pointer is still moving, but not the, not the background for some reason. Okay. That doesn't okay. really matter. I mean, uh, I, I, I just want uh, I'll share again. Now, can yeah, you see okay. this? Oh, yeah, that, 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 that did the trick. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I'm sure you, you mean sort of schematically, but you, you've indicated the quantum soft region there. Mm. Um, and it seems a little bit funny uh, to mm. think of the, you know, a separate quantum soft region, you know. Um, what, what physics do you really mean? I mean? What's the physics of the quantum soft region that is not in the soft region? Okay, uh, so quantum soft region is essentially the generic uh, soft region. But I'm arguing that uh, the, the only physics should come from uh, specific corners of the soft region. So in particular, the energy component should always be small. Uh, for, for example, in the, in the potential region, energy component is suppressed as, uh, by uh, a factor of V compared with uh, spatial components, which are generic. And in the radiation region, uh, you have long wavelength uh, emission both energy and spatial components are suppressed by V, but uh, in either radiation or potential regions, the energy component is suppressed in the static limit. So if you go to the static limit without uh, making the energy components vanish, then uh, this is uh, believed to be some uh, quantum contribution. And, and so uh, it will eventually cancel when you sum over diagram. For example, when you sum over box and cross box to localize on matter poles, um, you will uh, uh, set the energy component to be small, for example. And yeah, so uh, I think uh, from the world line intuition, we believe that the quantum soft region should eventually cancel out. Right. So it doesn't really Maybe help. I can comment oh, uh, yeah, okay. about the physics of that region. Another example, which I think for me was illuminating is the bubble box integral. So this is a, the iteration of a three level exchange in a one loop correction to the, to the potential, but it's a genuine quantum correction. Uh, and that integral comes purely from the quantum sub region. So you can think of it as, as encoding all of those iterations of quantum corrections to the potential and, and three level stuff, which if you're just expanding Q, they're of classical order as far as the amplitude is concerned, but they're actually quantum. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, what what renormalization scheme are you using? Like on channel or? Um, I, I'm making a, a simpler comment, which is that integral. If you if you count q's, yeah. it has the same scaling as other classical integrals of that order. Right, but that's probably before you've added the counter term, right? So if you add a counter term, you're probably going to remove a divergence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You can also right. remove it by subtract by subtracting subtracting lower loop iteration. Yeah. Still, but I I think I think I get the intuition. Actually, it's quite quite helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. But again, isn't the separation based on the power expansion in V? I still don't understand very, the very basic point of what, what means this separation is if, if V is over the one. Okay, <laughs> so uh, essentially I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm specializing to the small V limits and then, and then resum. Yeah, for example, uh, hey. I would conjecture that if you resum potential region and radiation region, then you get the full answer, and the calculation will be simpler than uh, uh, brute force calculation, in, in including the full soft region. You, you are saying somehow there is a convergent power series in V, and you can compute term by term mm. by sticking to that region. Yeah, and, and I, I believe that procedure will involve uh, fewer Feynman diagrams uh, than a direct soft region calculation. But yeah, until we are, we've done it, it's just something I say, but. Okay, maybe we should, um, you know, if you don't mind, maybe we should stop there and move on. We're beginning to get a little late. So. Okay, thanks again. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Thank everybody. You.